Wisconsin and Rutgers are next at ESPN Plus. Let's go, Rutgers! Let's go, Rutgers! Let's go, Rutgers! Let's go, Rutgers! We're inside the Kohl Center in Madison, where more than 17,000 are on hand to watch the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the 15th ranked Wisconsin Badgers. Along with Mike Kelly, I'm Craig Kishan. Nice to have you with us this evening. A battle of two unbeaten teams, and we start with Wisconsin, a dominant backcourt, Mike, and Freddie Owens, a career-high 24 points the other night. Well, you're right, Craig. While the weather is getting colder in Wisconsin, Freddie Owens is only getting hotter. He's combining his quickness with a strong jump shot and an inside game to be a presence for Wisconsin on the perimeter. And his backcourt teammate, Devin Harris, a solid player. Picked to be preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. Has an intermediate jump shot as well. If they get hot, it'll be trouble for Rutgers tonight. Well, the Scarlet Knights also off to a 2-0 start. They're athletic, and they are led by Ricky Shields. Well, you're right, Craig. Ricky Shields, the best three-point shooter on this Scarlet Knights team, and he leads a crew of three-point shooters. He's hot. He can get hot. He can hit the outside shot, and if he does that, he will make it very tough for Wisconsin to win this game. Shields is explosive, the leading returning scorer. Well, the Badgers have won back-to-back -back Big Ten titles in large part to their blue-collar work ethic. No one exemplifies that more than junior forward Mike Wilkinson, the team's leader on the glass and in the paint. Rutgers and Wisconsin next. Saturday afternoons were made for family projects. Back at the Kohl Center in Madison, 15th ranked Wisconsin and Rutgers ready to battle. We're off to very good starts, both 2-0 coming into this contest. Let's take a look at the starting lineups and Brian Hervé Lamazana, 6'10", very athletic, multi-skilled forward for Rutgers. And for Wisconsin, we talked about their backcourt. Dave Mater will have his hands pulled in the middle with Lamazana should he elect to come with the paint, and he can elect to go just about anywhere for Gary Waters, his third season at Rutgers, 32 and 29 overall, spent five years at Kent State, took Kent State to two NCAA tournaments, and feels as though he has this Rutgers team headed in the right direction. Bo Ryan couldn't ask for anything more. Two straight Big Ten championships, back-to-back -back. Coach of the Year honors in the Big Ten. That's a history-making event, 45 and 21 for Bull Ryan. And again, these uh, two teams off to very good starts as we are ready to get this game underway. Officials Ted Hillary, Tim Higgins, and Gene Fonji, veteran Big Ten crew on hand here at the Cole Center in Madison this evening. Amazana and Mater will tip off, and we are underway as Wisconsin controls the opening tip. And Mike, what are you looking at for today? Well, for Wisconsin, I want to see Devin Harris and Mike Wilkinson get connected. The first two games, they haven't done that just yet, but they've played together for two years now. They're solid juniors, and they're the leaders on this team. If they get started, it makes it a lot easier for Wisconsin to win games. So Wisconsin works it around the perimeter. Wade's first shot won't go. Wilkinson crashes the boards. That's his strength, offensive rebounding, although he gives it up this time to Marquise Webb. Well, for Rutgers, Craig, I'd like them to see Lamazana get involved early. He's a big 6'10 athletic player, and he's got the ability to take over a basketball game. If he can do that early on the road in front of 17,000 people, we'll see him get into a groove and probably help this Rutgers team give a very, very solid outing tonight. He's got the ball now. He makes the move against Freddie Owens, and Owens makes him dish it out. Shot clock now under five. Shot is good, a three-pointer for Marquise Webb. And that's our first scoring of the night, just beating the shot clock for a 3-0 lead. You're right. Well, it was a, uh, a good result, but probably not a good shot. They waited till way too deep in the shot clock, forced the shot. He made it, but that's probably not what they want to live by tonight. Wilkinson with the ball down low. He makes his move in the paint. Ball stripped away. It's loose, and Dave Mater gets tied up with Mamazana. 
Hey, watch the jump shot here. At the end of the shot clock, they really didn't have anything going, so he forced it one-on-one. -on -one. Good result, but not going to get you the consistency you want on offense if you're Rutgers team. And for Wisconsin, the last possession, too much standing around. They give the ball to Mike Wilkinson down on the post. He doesn't do much with it, and everybody's watching him. You have to move. He's a good passer. If you stay active on the offense, he'll find you. He'll get you the ball in good position. Although it's early defensively, do you see these teams doing probably what they like to do? Uh, Wisconsin not being able to do much offensively, and Rutgers forced to that shot clock last second. Yeah, you're right. I think early on in the game, the defenses are so strong, you're pumped up. The defenses win early on. It takes a little while for players to get into the flow offensively. Lamazana called for the offensive foul, our first foul of the game. There's Gary Waters not liking it, one of his star players. Picks up the game's first foul, not even two minutes in. And my second point for Wisconsin is to handle the ball pressure right there. We didn't see a full court press from Rutgers, but we're going to look for that to come as the game gets close and as we move on. Wisconsin battling some injuries early on. Alondo Tucker out with a broken foot. So is Jason Chappell. Tucker, an outstanding freshman in the Big Ten a year ago. Hope to have him back just before the start of the Big Ten season. Wade dances through the lane. And does he pick up a foul the way in? It looks like he draws the foul down low. This one's going to go on Sean McZaney. You know, what you see right now, Craig, is two defenses very pumped up. This is a big game. And right now, offensively, they're trying to make plays one-on-one. -on -one. They're passing the ball to a player, and everybody's watching right there. Boo Wade does a good job of getting into the lane and drawing the foul and getting to the free throw line. But still, we haven't seen a good flow, any good back cuts on offense on either side. This is something Wisconsin does very well, getting to the free throw line. And that means they're in the paint forcing that ball inside, attacking the basket. You're right. You see Lando Tucker on the bench for Wisconsin. He has an inside presence. He's a guy who gets in the lane, who gets a lot of those fouls or draws fouls upon him because he gets in there. But you're right, Craig. Wisconsin does an amazing job of getting to the line. For two years now, they've made more free throws than their opponents have attempted. That's Just an amazing. unbelievable stat. And the uh, pace is, uh, continues to be set here. 51 out of 69 at the free throw line coming in. Their opponents only 14 of 19. And Wisconsin matches up Freddie Owens on Lamazana right there on the outside. It'll be interesting to watch that matchup throughout the game as Wisconsin will most likely bounce around several different players to try and stop the 6'10 versatile athlete. And Zaney dragged his pivot foot. That's a turnover. So a 3-1 low scoring start to this contest between the Big East. Rutgers and the Big Ten's Wisconsin Badgers. Well, Wisconsin, they're trying to get something going. They set a double screen for Devin Harris. Nothing happens, but they're trying to move now, trying to get some blocking on offense and maybe create a little something rather than just the one-on-one -on -one action. And another foul on Rutgers. This one goes on Xaney. So a couple of quick fouls on the Scarlet Knights. And Rutgers isn't really a deep team, so this is a cause for concern for Gary Waters as he sees his team pick up a couple early fouls with not a deep bench. We'll have to watch that throughout this first half. Xaney's second foul, team's third. Yeah, as a captain, you go on the road and you want your captain to lead, and, and unfortunately, he's going to have to go to the bench now. Byron Joins comes in to take his spot. Wisconsin coming off a win on Tuesday night against Eastern Illinois at the Kohl Center, 81 to 47. Rutgers, a winner over Buffalo, 78-53 on the exchange. Here comes Rutgers again, up three to one. It's time to drive, and the hoop good for Adrian Hill. Adrian Hill, not much of a score, but you see right there, he's athletic, got the ability to put it on the floor. Wisconsin doesn't come with any help defenders, and he takes it all the way to the basket. Very quiet Kohl Center crowd here. More than 17,000 have sold out every home game for the first time in this building's history. And Wisconsin gets on the board now with Devin Harris off the glass. Well, there's Devin Harris. That's what he does. He creates shots for his offense. He could tell they're a little stagnant. He gets in the lane. A very nice move by the junior. Wisconsin's first field goal, only shooting 38% as a team in their first two games, doing probably every other little thing right that they need to do, such as playing defense, forcing turnovers. Yep, and help defense there down in the post. You have to help out when you're undermanned and undersized. Zach Morley 
New to Wisconsin, number 44, junior college transfer. Ball tipped out of bounds. Off of Boo Wade, so it's going to be Scarlet Knight basketball when we come back to the Cole Center in Madison. That's it early in the first half, and since the Cole Center was open, the Badgers' record overall 65 and 14. But check this out 14 consecutive wins right now, which is second only to Illinois in the Big Ten. Look at the record over the last five years 63 and 9, and under Bo Ryan in two plus seasons, 29 and 2. That's just unbelievable. Great job by Bo Ryan coming in here out of UW Platteville, then going to UWM and coming here at a state school, recruiting good players and taking what he had and really building on that. And you see now they've sold out every game this season. And for two years in a row, the Grateful Red, you see him right there, that's what they call the student section for Wisconsin, has showed up and has made this a tough environment for opposing teams. Tough enough to win uh, Big Ten championships in Bo Ryan's first two seasons, and you certainly need home cooking. And Wisconsin's got it here at the Kohl Center. 16 0 in the Big Ten over the last two seasons, so they're winning their conference games here as well. Rutgers up two with the basketball. Shot on the way, rolls out for Ricky Shields. He's had a quiet start, as have the Wisconsin Badgers overall here. Yeah, but that's what Ricky Shields does. He gets in the lane, and he also has the deep three-point jump shot that he can hit, which makes him so tough to defend. Zach Morley with the ball. Now stagnant on offense is Wisconsin. You see right there a little frustration. They can't get anything going. Rutgers doing a great job defensively. Wilkins from the top of the key for three won't go. Out of bounds to Wisconsin. So Zach Morley keeps it alive battling Rutgers for that basketball. And that's what Morley does. He, he's an energy guy. He gets in there. Looks for him to have about 10 rebounds tonight as he stays active. He gets his hand on a lot, hands on a lot of balls and he keeps the ball alive for Wisconsin. Morley uh, injured his senior year in high school, so he went the junior college route to kind of build up his status as a recruit in Division I. Bo Ryan discovered him, and he chose Wisconsin over Minnesota. Hits his first shot of the game. And I guess he goes by Aston Kutcher with the hair. People call him that 70s show on this Wisconsin team, and you can see the resemblance. He's got the Wisconsin uh, show all based in. We're in the Badger red. 5-5 game. Nice side, nice feed from Joins. Sure, nice good inside position as the ball was swung. The postman got position, was able to take it right up when he got the ball. Adrian Hill with a couple of field goals, four points. Wilkinson thought about it. Drives, draws the foul. Check that, he is called for the offensive foul coming in. Sure, and there's Lamazano. We talked about him on offense and how Wisconsin was going to deal with him. Right there, he's a big shot blocker. He gets over, moves his feet, watch him under the basket, number one. He slides over in time to, to uh, get in front of Mike Wilkinson, and he's able to draw the charge. And he's doing that with a foul, taking a chance. Boy, they'd really be hurting if Lamazano got another foul. I mentioned uh, Rutgers not deep. They'll go about eight right now. Gary Waters would prefer to keep it that way. He already has Sean Exaney on the bench with two fouls. Inside joint, shot won't go, battle for the board. Goes down to Hill, wild shot put up. Rutgers still controlling the basketball down low. Ball still won't go in for the Scarlet Knights. Devin Harris comes out of there with it. On the run for the Badgers. Morley regains possession, kicks it out to Owens. Down low, Wilkinson can't handle it. Maybe one pass too many there. I agree, Craig. That, that's a credit to the Rutgers defense as they forced Wisconsin into making too many passes. They had a good look down low by Zach Morley on the pass for Devin Harris. He wasn't able to make anything of it, and from there they were playing catch-up. Rutgers did a good job of positioning, helping on defense, and forced Wisconsin into a bad pass. You see the shooting percentages. Wisconsin only two of nine. It's kind of been their storyline. Not quite that low. As I mentioned, 38% in the first two games. Freddie Owens just sticking to Lamazano right now, doing a good job of staying in front of him, not giving him any good looks. 
talking to assistant coach Greg Gard before the game, he said, you know, a lot of it's we're just missing some medium range shots. You're right. Well, and that's what you need in the college game. A lot of times you can get by, but because that you can play zone defense, there's no illegal defense. There's good help all the time, and you can't get all the way to the basket, but you have to hit the intermediate shot. Outstanding steal, control the basketball, spin for Harrison, it won't go. And now they've got numbers, Rutgers. Amazana travel. Just a little hesitation in the lane. And we will take a timeout. Scarlet Knights lead Wisconsin 7-5 at the Kohl Center in Madison. 7-5, Rutgers over Wisconsin midway through the first half. Herve Lamazana averaging 14 points a game. Very skilled athletic player. What's he doing on the court right now? Well, you're not going to get anything done if you just stay on the perimeter. He just kind of floats around. You know, he's built up as this very athletic, versatile player, but he needs to use that right now. Get some screens, move around, make the defender play a little bit. So when you get the ball late in the shot clock, he's a little winded, and you can use your athleticism, athleticism to your advantage. Right now, he takes a seat after not really being much of a factor early in the game. Turnover situation, five apiece. And points off those turnovers. Rutgers has been able to take advantage for the most part. Wisconsin only averaging six and a half turnovers per game in their first two games. Exactly, Greg. You took the word right out of my mouth. Wisconsin was just 13 over two games. Starts out with five. Very sloppy play from both sides. Rutgers averaging 13 turnovers a contest. Ray Nixon in for Wisconsin. And Joel Wigan in for Rutgers. Nixon's got it, kicks it back out. Harris tries to drive the lane and gets cut off by Wigan. All kicked out. Well, nothing for Wisconsin on offense. Great job by Rutgers, staying on their feet and helping out defensively. Harris, nice feed down low to Zach Morley. <laughs> That was a facial right there. Zach Morley does a great job of finishing off the nice dish from Devin Harris. Zach Morley, another reason that here in Wisconsin, the state player of the year, Brian Butch, has decided to redshirt, try to build up some muscle mass, gain some weight. 6'11. Brian Butch, one of the biggest recruits in Wisconsin basketball history, redshirting. That tells you something about Wisconsin basketball right now and where they're at. The, you know, a nationally ranked player would actually redshirt this team because they're that good. Donald's All-American first team, and he's redshirting. <laughs> that, that's a good sign. But it's a good, it's a positive thing right now for both parties. Shot clock under 15. Drive to the hoop off the window, offensive foul on rookie Shields. Maybe a little frustration, I think. Well, let's watch Devin Harris right now as he drives and dishes. It's so important for Wisconsin to get something going right there. They get a little movement, they force Rutgers to help, and that always causes a mismatch. And if you're as good as Devin Harris, you'll find the open man. And that was Zach Morley. Good job by Devin Harris and Zach Morley of making a nice play. Five team fouls now on Rutgers, only one by Wisconsin as we're just about 10 minutes in. Morley, Nixon, move Wisconsin. And now we're seeing Wisconsin getting into the flow. A couple back cuts right there, easy baskets. That's what Wisconsin wants to do, and that was what Rutgers wasn't letting them do for the first 10 minutes of this game. And Lamazana gets off the bench and gets ready to check in for Rutgers. Long range shot won't go for Wigan. Wilkinson with the rebound for Wisconsin. They have the basketball up too. Uh, we're seeing some sets out of Wisconsin. We'll watch them in their half-court offense. It's called the swing offense, and they do it very well. It's something Bowline came up with himself, and it leads to a lot of easy baskets. Wilkinson, three, long rebound. Exaney back in for Rutgers with two fouls. And another offensive foul called on the Scarlet Knights. Mike Wilkinson taking the charge. Pretty great shield. Watch Ricky Shields here. Mike Wilkinson gets down low. That's about the third or fourth charge call. Both, both teams need to recognize what help defense is there. Ricky Shields, their leading scorer, is going to sit down right now. But good job. Watch Mike Wilkinson as he slides over, gets his hands up, does not lean into the player, and then sells it, obviously, with a great action job, falls to the ground. A very good job by Mike Wilkinson. And, and this is going to put Ricky Shields, their leading scorer, on the bench. 
got the Band-Aid over the uh, right eye. Two fouls, though. Harris lost that one out of bounds into the Rutgers bench, but Wisconsin will get it there. Well, 16 fouls with nine minutes to play for Rutgers is going to spell trouble as they are not a deep team and they cannot afford to put their best players on the bench. Clayton Hansen in for Wisconsin. Quincy Doobie back in for Rutgers. Long shot won't go for Nixon. Doobie the rebound. Here comes Rutgers only trailing by two. Amazana thought about it. Pulls up from about 16, no. Morley the rebound for Wisconsin. Harris tries to push the tempo. Gets it back from Nixon. Nixon spins, and he's tied up nicely by Exaney, and he comes up with a steal. Yeah, very good defense by Rutgers, but the ball just got stuck on that side of the court. Long range shot won't go for Doobie. We'll see what Wisconsin does right here. They had a couple good possessions, but then the last last two or three, they've taken some outside shots, have not hit them. And then their last possession, they just got the ball taken away. We'll see if they run a good offense here. Clayton Hansen has been working on that little jump hook. This time he draws nothing. Trying to develop a shot. The walk on here at Wisconsin, getting some valuable minutes early on. Harris. This is what he does best. Steal. Now the dish. Hansen tries to finish, but he's fouled on the way in by Quincy Doobie. Well, you said it, Craig. That is what Devin Harris does best, and that's why he led the Big Ten in steals last year. He sees the passing lane, and he's so quick, and he's got long arms. And you, you put all those things together, he's going to get a lot of steals, and he does it right there. Generally, he'll finish with a dunk, but he didn't have the angle. He finds a trailing Clayton Hansen who's going to go to the line right now. Clayton Hansen, his third year at Wisconsin as a walk-on. He's got an interesting storyline that a lot of people in Wisconsin know, state product, and accepted a scholarship to play for Bo Ryan at UW-Milwaukee. And when Ryan left that school and came to Wisconsin, he gave up his scholarship there to walk on here to play basketball to follow the coach. Well, you're right. You know, he follows the coach to UWM, and, you, you know, you don't want to pick a school just for the coach. But a lot of times, if you're a student athlete, you do, you know, that weighs heavily on your decision. And it did for him, and now he's here in Wisconsin. It's worked out for everyone. Wisconsin now with a four-point lead. Wisconsin on a 10-2 run to take an 11-7 lead over Rutgers here in the first half from the Kohl Center in Madison. Other Big Ten scores. Northwestern, a winner today, 69-61 over Northwestern State. How about this? Iowa upsets Louisville in overtime, 70 to 69. And that's the shocker of today so far. You see Iowa, you know, picked to be middle of the road in the Big Ten, and Louisville is supposed to win their conference USA, and Iowa goes in and beats them in overtime. Big game. Michigan State, an easy winner over Pennsylvania. And we'll check in with more scores around the Big Ten and top 25 as our game progresses here this evening in Madison. Rutgers, no field goals over the last six and a half minutes. Wisconsin's defense coming up strong one more time. Wilkinson ahead to Harris. And he gets bumped and hits the deck. It looks like he's going to be okay, but another foul on Rutgers. And now Wisconsin will also do another thing they do very well, and that's shoot free throws. Yeah, Wisconsin not afraid to open it up in the front court, and Rutgers just killing themselves with fouls right now. They're, they're behind the eight ball and they continue to foul this Wisconsin team who makes a living at the free throw line. Eight team fouls. Harris hits the first, so he'll get another chance. It's so important to have a player like Devin Harris on your team, someone who started every game that he's been in college. He's got the experience, he's got the knowledge, he's got the confidence, and he really can lead a team out on the basketball court. He does that for Wisconsin. And he makes a pair there. Devin Harris, one of only four Badgers in history to score 800 points before his junior season. Names like Finley, Sellers, and Blackwell, the three ahead of him. That's a reason to smile. You see him with the smile out there. Having fun. 13 to 7, Wisconsin lead. Wilkinson playing defense again, calls the timeout to save possession of the basketball. 
And while they huddle for 30 seconds, let's show you some more scores around the Big Ten. The Illini, a winner at Temple today, 75-60. They control that game from the get-go. Another favorite in the Big Ten. And Indiana gets back out of the winning track, topping Xavier 80-77. Yeah, it's obviously what Wisconsin wants to see is these Big Ten teams winning as they go out, build up the conference strength of schedule, so it means a lot when you go into the NCAA play. But I think Illinois, Michigan State, and Wisconsin are going to be the three front runners right now in the Big Ten Conference. You saw Michigan State, they got killed by Tom Izzo after their loss to Kansas, which I thought was kind of interesting. I thought maybe a little bit of motivation as Tom Izzo really berated his team for losing at Kansas, which, you know, really isn't that bad of a loss. When you go into Kansas, a hostile environment this early in the season, but he obviously wanted to prove a point to his team that it's only going to get harder from this point forward. He just wanted to beat Bill Self. <laughs> I think so. A Big Ten, buddy. I think so. He couldn't get away from it. But, they, boy, they have a tough schedule. There's no cupcake schedule for boy, Michigan State. It's unbelievable. They are tested from game one. So after the timeout, Wisconsin with the ball and a six-point lead. Take a look how Wisconsin leaves the lane open. When you do that, you allow for driving lanes, you allow for people to get in the post and not have the help pressure there. Nixon, jumper won't go. Rebound, Clayton Hansen. Wisconsin, very strong offensive rebounding club. Bounce pass won't go to Harris from Wade. Turnover, Rutgers with the basketball, Webb has it. Now they work around that Wisconsin defense. Only one field goal in the last 10 minutes for the Scarlet Knights. Exaney, an offensive try. And finally, a field goal by Lamazana. And he's heard from Hervé Lamazana, a presence for Rutgers really has been quiet. Maybe that's the shot that'll get him started tonight. The three-point shot that tops the key. Obviously a tough matchup when you're 6'10", you can shoot the three, but really hasn't done much tonight. So Rutgers, two field goals in 10 minutes, trailing only by three. That's not bad. One of those situations, you know you're down on the road like that. You're hit a cold spell, but you look at the scoreboard here in the game. Well, you're right. And, and here's his shot, his three-pointer from the top of the key. Like I said, a 6'10 player able to shoot the key. Very soft touch. It, it, it presents a problem for Wisconsin. Right now, Rutgers has played terrible, but they're only down three points. Maybe that's the shot that gets them back into this game. The prototypical player, though, that's developing now, the big, athletic, do-everything, multi-skilled, individual you see it all the time i think one of the first players who did that was lamar odom he was really one of those players 6 11 and he was shooting nba threes in college and uh, at rhode island he's a very tough matchup player i'm not mistaken wisconsin's matchup there handled lamar odom <laughs> pretty well well it was a team defense i can tell you that much <laughs> Viewers in New York, Mike Kelly, former Badger, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. It's it cost all about a defense. lot of money, Chris. Let's mention that. <laughs> Harris on the miss. And this time the foul on Zach Morley flying in. You know what? I don't think that's a bad foul for Zach Morley. He's brought in the game to really be an aggressive player, create things on the offensive rebound. He's going after the glass. He can afford to get a couple fouls like that every game as long as he's staying aggressive for Wisconsin. Rutgers only down three, a chance to perhaps tie this game up. Lamazana hit a three from the top of the key. Last trip down, but Wisconsin's defense is pretty tough right now. And that's about the third or fourth inlet pass that has been knocked away by a Wisconsin defender. Rutgers not doing a good job of creating a good passing lane to get the ball inside to the post. Morley from long range hits. Boy, he's showing his skills. Gary Waters says, you know what? We need to regroup a little bit here. So he calls a timeout. His club is even on made field goals. Two two-point field goals made and two three-point field goals made. And trail 15-10. Well, yeah, I mean, two two-pointers and two three-pointers in 15 minutes is not a good stat for Rutgers. They want to take a break here. They're only down five. Things aren't too bad yet, but they just need to get into a flow offensively. One nothing over Purdue. ESPN USA Today top 25 scores. Number 18, Wake Forest handles Yale 86-61.
Notre Dame, 20th in the nation. Chris 78, Thomas. 64 winner. Right, Chris Thomas, the point guard at Notre Dame, a Devin Harris type of player. He really leads that team and does a lot for them. Number 10, North Carolina, Roy Williams at Cleveland State. They just Cleveland State. pick it up by six points. It's odd to say Roy Williams at North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Bill Self at Kansas. Well, great coaches, you know, they can really pick up where their team left off. You know, when they go to those big programs like that, and we're going to see good years out of both of those teams. Another miss for the Scarlet Knights, so Wisconsin with the basketball. Freddie Owens has it back into the lineup. And a foul away from the ball. And this is not exactly, this will be his third. I think that might be Webb. I'm not sure. I think it might be Webb, but what's happening here is Wisconsin setting a lot of screens, and Rutgers, when they opened the game, was very good defensively. They stayed in position, but as the game's going on, they're getting a little bit sloppy, and they're starting to grab and hold, and they've already been in foul trouble early on in the game, but it's only getting worse as it goes along. Marquise Webb does pick up the foul. That's his second. Nine team fouls, so Harris back at the free throw line for Wisconsin. This is the first ball loose, rebound to Rutgers. That's what the doctor ordered for the Scarlet Knights right now, missed the front end. You wonder if you're Rutgers, at what point do you throw in that full court press? They're known for their pressing style, but they've stayed away from it, probably because the score hasn't gotten out of hand, but at some point, they're gonna try and do something to turn the floor of this game around. Lamazana works it out high against Hanson. Now picked up by Morley. Clock down to four. Exani throws one up, hits it, and draws the foul. And it looks like it's going to go against Dave Bader of Wisconsin. Like nothing coming easy for Rutgers, but just a good individual play there for Sean Exani to get the ball and go up and take the foul. Watch as his defender goes over to help. He just makes himself available, grabs a shot, and goes right up with it. You'll see here, Clayton Hanson goes over to help, and Exani. Just looks to the ball, slides to the hoop, goes up with his left hand and makes a nice shot. Dave Mader at nearly seven feet. Held his feet, but caught the arms. Sean Exaney hits the old-fashioned three-pointer, and we have a two-point game as we head to a timeout at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin by two over Rutgers. First half, tight ball game. Wisconsin 15-13 over Rutgers. As you take a look at the banners from the Big Ten Championships the last two seasons. Next televised game for the Wisconsin Badgers on ESPN Plus. Coming up Wednesday, December 10th at 7 Central against state rival UW Green Bay. Always big games when you get the interstate rivals. There's a little extra added benefit as the players want those games very much to prove to their uh, high school teammates that they may be playing against that they have the best program in the state. And now Rutgers, as you take a look at the turnovers, finally puts that full core press to use a little bit. Yeah, you're right. I was just talking about it. At some point we were going to see it. I'm surprised it took this long, but in a low-scoring game, I guess they didn't feel the need to push the tempo, but now they want to pick it up and, and see what happens right before half. A little warning to Wisconsin. We can do this and we will do this when we need to. I think so. I think they're going to feel it out right now and see what comes of it. Zach Morley off the window and he has come off the bench for eight points and Wisconsin's bench has produced 12 of their 17 points. Yeah, meanwhile, zero points off the bench for Rutgers. Not a deep bench at all and they've been in foul trouble and it's hurt them offensively. This time Ricky Shields hits one in the lane. 17-15. Let's watch this Rutgers press as they try to get big. They've got tall athletic players. They're going to try to deflect passes that are going between the press and hopefully cause some turnovers. Wilkinson out high for Wisconsin. Tries to go down low. As Owens. There is no way that Lamazana is going to let him put up that shot. No, Lamazana, in fact, let Freddie Owens get the ball as if to say, I want to guard you down here because I know I can block your shot. Lamazana for three off the back of the iron. Harris the rebound for Wisconsin. And he'll push it. Straight down, draws the foul. 
Does draw the foul, but they will not count continuation on the basket. You know, Craig, I thought we were going to see more of this. I thought Rutgers was going to push the pace a little bit in Wisconsin, but so far, it's been more of a half-court game. You see Devin Harris here getting ahead of the pack, and he does this. He's able to create good shots for himself, he catches the defense off guard, and he gets the foul, he goes to the line, and that's one of the reasons we see this Wisconsin team making more free throws than their opponents attempt. Ten team fouls for Rutgers, and with a minute 43 to go in the first half, it will be two free throws for every trip now for the Badgers. Uh, you can't put yourself in that position on the road against a nationally ranked team like Wisconsin. If you're Rutgers, you have to be solid on defense, but you can't commit those fouls because Wisconsin, a solid team as it is in a deep team, will just continue to take advantage of the easy shots. Do be back in for Shields. Wisconsin is a team shooting nearly 74% from the free throw line. Not bad. Yeah, they're easy shots. You just can't do that against a good team and expect to win. But just a four-point game here late in the first half. Amazana works against Owens. Fires. Does he get the roll? No. Bounces out. Offensive rebound, however. And Adrian Hill lost his feet, turns the ball over to Wisconsin. Yeah, Freddie Owens doing a great job on defense, staying in front of the 6'10", Lamazana, forcing him into a tough leaner. Could have been a foul, I suppose, either way on that shot, but instead there's no foul, the shot doesn't go, and Wisconsin continues to, to do a good job on Lamazana. Harris works against Wiggins. This is to Morley. Shot out of the way, won't go. His first miss of the night. There's 4-4 before that shot. Very well off the bench for the Lions Club. 60 seconds to go in the first half. Fish down low. Shot out of the way. Goes for Adrian Hill. It was anybody's ball there for a moment. Sure, Hill just a big inside presence. Able to make himself available and finish with the basket. Harris off the window. Won't go. Lamazana battles for the rebound. Kind of interesting, instead of going for the loose ball to ensure he'd have it, he just stopped and said, the official tar ball. Yeah, yeah, interesting play, but right here you see an offense for Rutgers as they get the ball down down low, and it's Adrian Hill who just kind of wrestles it, wrestles it away with his aggressiveness and goes up for the basket. There's quick hands, ball loose, comes up with the steal. And dunks it home. Can you say Big Ten player of the year? That's what Devin Harris does. He's out there all alone. Rutgers is trying to get a last shot, and he just takes the ball away and goes in for the dunk. And the fans at the Cole Center feel like they've got something to cheer about here in the first half as it comes to a close. And answering on the other side, Quincy Doobie. Harris from half court. It won't go, but it's been an entertaining and close first half of basketball here in Madison. Wisconsin, 15th in the country, getting challenged by Rutgers. It is the Badgers, 21. The Scarlet Knights, 19. We're coming back to Madison in a moment. Back at the first half when Mike and I come back to the Kohl Center. 20 minutes of basketball along with Mike. Defense, ineffective, struggling. They pulled him. They put in Jason Wielden. He has literally been perfect in bringing the Warriors back to a tie. Four or five from the floor. He was a spark for Wisconsin and for Rutgers. Lamazana only really getting into the act with that one shot, but it was a three-pointer trying to get him started. And then there was Devin Harris at the end of the half getting Wisconsin a spark as he goes in for the dunk after the steal. Morley and Harris lead Wisconsin at scoring with eight apiece. Adrian Hill was six for Rutgers. We'll come back to start the second half in a moment. Ready for the second half. The 15th ranked Badgers lead Rutgers 21 to 19 as we take a look at the first half stats. Nothing equal on here except for really low field goal shooting. The turnover battle that has plagued Rutgers. Wisconsin's capitalized at the free throw line and off the bench. Well, you're right. The one thing that jumps out at you, though, I think, is the 0 for 7 three point field goals for Wisconsin. That has really allowed this Rutgers team, who hasn't played as well as they can, to stay in the ball game. Both these clubs coming in with 2 0 records early in the season. 
And there's Zach Morley. He starts, of course, off the bench, leading the way and scoring with eight points. He averages seven on the season. And 12 points and nine rebounds in the opener against Penn on the road last week. Boy, and Rutgers just continuing to shoot themselves in the foot. They just get out of the first half where they were in foul trouble. And in no more than 11 seconds, they get another foul. And this one on Webb, and he picks up his third foul to start out the second half. Just seconds in. Just a frustration foul as he bowled over Dave Mayer of Wisconsin as he set a screen. Second call on Dave Banner. Well, you see what happened for Wisconsin on offense there. They didn't get a lot going, and for a big man, you have to be aware of that. You get too complacent and you start sitting in the lane. He was in there for a good four or five seconds. So a foul and a turnover start the second half. A low scoring first half by these teams' standards coming in. Wisconsin averaging 72 and a half a game. Rutgers averaging 74. They're going to have to have an explosive second half for that to happen tonight. Yeah, I agree. And I think we're going to look to see that press again. We saw it only briefly out of Rutgers. Steal by Harris. And a dunk by Devin Harris. Who way blocking all the way down to the end zone. Yeah, it was like a pulling guard. They're getting out to the second line of defense, keeping the Rutgers defender away from Devin Harris, allowing him to go in for the nice dunk. Foul again away from the ball. It looks like Devin Harris. No, I think Dave Bader. Let's watch here as Boo Wade. This is Mark Tauscher, the Green Bay Packers here. Watch him as he slides along, keeps Rutgers player out of there, and Devin Harris knows what to do with it when he gets the ball on a fast break. Not really the moving screen. <laughs> I like the pulling guard. Pulling guard, moving screen. Okay. It was a reach. And another turnover. I'm Adrian Hill on the travel. 23-19 Wisconsin. Quickly down court. Blue Wade for the Badgers. Goes inside. Maynard kicks it back out. Like to work that inside game. Tough move by Mater as he scoots underneath Lamazana. Good job by Dave Maynard of staying patient and a poor job by Rutgers of not giving any help. Mater down there, not very nimble. You'd like to see Rutgers maybe throw a defender at him and make him get the ball out of his hand, but they didn't do that, and he went all the way. Zaney, shot in the lane, won't go. Ball batted up and a foul on Rutgers. And they'll go the other way with it. it. Looks like Adrian Hill again on the foul. Here's the press. Gary Waters probably trying to just get anything going for Rutgers right now. They just haven't been in the floor of this game. It's a little bit tighter than what we saw at the end of the first half. More pressure, Wisconsin gets it over. Wilkinson finds Harris. Even though he fumbled the ball, he still found a wide open Harris. And you have to do that if you're Wisconsin. You have to penalize a team for putting on the press. If you don't do that, they'll continue to press you until you take advantage and exploit it. If you just pull the, pull the ball out, once you break it, they'll continue to stay in it. Wisconsin opens up with the first six points in the second half to stretch the lead to the biggest for either side of the game at 27-19. Gene Manji steps in. Let's take a look at Wisconsin, how they break the press. You see right there, Mike Wilkinson, a big man who can handle the ball, actually fumbles it, but he gets it to Devin Harris, and that's what you have to do if you want to stop Rutgers from pressing you. You have to break the press, and then you have to attack. You're going to have numbers. You're going to have a mismatch, but if you don't take advantage, there's no penalty for Rutgers to put it on. Morley in, made her out. See the points of the paint. Wisconsin with a, an advantage there at 16-10. A lot of that coming in the second half early. Yeah, this has been a bad start for Rutgers and a great start for Wisconsin. Several turnovers, a couple fouls, a breakaway dunk for Devin Harris. Everything you would have drawn up if you're Bull Ryan at halftime. Badgers back with the basketball and an eight-point advantage. Harris dribbles around, kicks it out. Wilkinson wide open for three. 
That's the connection we talked about at the beginning of the game. Harrison Wilkinson, the two juniors playing together for two years now, going into their third. They can make it happen for Wisconsin. So Wilkinson has tried it from outside the arc tonight. Finally connects here, forcing Gary Waters to call timeout for Rutgers. Back at the Cole Center in Madison, there's Bucky Badger. He's not waving any white flag, that's for sure. He's got the yellow flag today. Wisconsin, not really a caution either. A 9-0 run to start the second half to grab a 30-19 lead. Gary Waters calling timeout. May not have had a whole lot to say to his club because they came out of that huddle and probably waited for almost a minute out on the floor. Yeah, I think that was one of those uh, berating of your team to try and spark a little something and then I, he said I have nothing more to say that's it get out there and let's start playing Rutgers 16 turnovers has led to was 20 points by Wisconsin including seven in this half finally they hit Exani gets uh, Rutgers on the board in the second half and yet they fall back out of the press maybe because Wisconsin was able to score but I'm still surprised as you think Rutgers would try to get something going here. Wilkinson not expecting that pass from Wade. Morley, a strong game off the bench for Wisconsin. Good feed down low, and shot bounces in for Freddie Owens. We saw earlier in the game when Lamazana really asked for Freddie Owens to get the ball down low. Right there, Freddie Owens makes up for the earlier shot block as he goes strong against Lamazana and gets the basket. Freddie Owens had a career high 24 points on Tuesday night against Eastern Illinois. Scores his first hoop of the night a moment ago. We saw Doobie check in right that last time out. We thought they'd want him in there for a little more offense as he can score, and that's what he just brought to the floor for Rutgers. Needs some instant offense. That's one man who can do it. Harris, skip pass. Owens, three ball in the corner. Wilkinson fights for the rebound. And it's lost out of bounds off Rutgers. And Wisconsin now with a nine-point lead. Another timeout on the floor. We're coming back to the Cole Center in a moment. March. Back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. They'd like to take it a step further or two. Of course, this year. And uh, Gary Waters taking Kent State, his former school, to two NCAA tournaments. You know Rutgers isn't going to be far behind. No, you know Rutgers is obviously a, a program on the up and coming. They've got three great freshman players added to their team, but they're still trying to find an identity, I believe. And when they do that, they're going to be a tough team to beat. Ball loose. And a foul is drawn by Ricky Shields. We'll see what happens after this free throw. I think Rutgers, if he makes his free throw, will go into the press. Let's watch Ricky Shields. Good play on defense, and obviously uses his body as Zach Morley can obviously jump very high and try and block his shot, but good job by Ricky Shields of protecting the ball with his body and drawing the foul. Ricky Shields to the free throw line. Saw his numbers from last season, averaging about 12 points a game. This year, 18 and a half to lead the team in scoring. Misses the free throw. Six of nine at the charity stripe in his first two games coming into here. You wonder why Rutgers has got only 23 points when they're leading. The score over 18 points a game has only got two so far tonight in Ricky Shields. And when you do that on defense, if you're Wisconsin, you know you're going to do some good things and probably have a good outcome. It's the second free throw. Clayton Hansen in Wisconsin's lineup. Both leading scores have been held dramatically in shift. Well, Freddie Owens just two. Well, I think for Wisconsin, with Freddie Owens, their leading scorer, he's just one of many players that can score for them. But for Rutgers, they're going to lean on Ricky Shields and a couple other guys, but they're not as deep. So when you have your leading scorer get shut down like he has, it does spell trouble. Wilkinson shot on the way. Won't go. Morley tries to keep it alive. Misses on the second opportunity, and Rutgers comes out of there with it. Quincy Doobie with the basketball. Still not getting anything in transition as Rutgers. I think as this game goes on, they're going to have to force some stuff and try to get in the up and down type of style of game. And a miss pass there. Lamazana did not know that was coming. So Shields winds up throwing it away. A little miscommunication. And for a second, Rutgers went to a zone. Now they're back. Well, no, it looks like they're in the zone again. So interesting to see Rutgers trying to switch it up, make something happen on defense. 
Ball tipped out of there. Harris gets it back after he tried the three. Wisconsin just one three-point field goal made. Probably part of the reason Gary Waters said, let's go to a zone, try and stop them on the inside, see what they can do from the outside. Wisconsin still looking for some instant offense with Kirk Penny graduating from last year's club. Mazzana drives and draws the foul on Morley. Count it and he'll go to the line. And these are the types of plays that you want Herve Lamazana to make. Let's watch as he takes it in the lane. With your 6'10", you get the guy off your feet, finish strong at the hoop. He does that here, uses his body. He's going to go to the line. But you need more of that if you're a Rutgers player. You need to see him with the shot fake. You need to see him, see him go in, hit the outside shot. If he does that for Rutgers, they're going to become a very difficult team to match up against defensively. But right now, he has not used his size or his athleticism in his advantage. This free throw, Xani comes up with the rebound, so Rutgers gets another try. Try to continue to carve into this Wisconsin lead, which is now down to six. Amazana, turnaround baseline, skips in. It's a four-point game. Crowd getting restless here in Madison. Still not much of a press from Rutgers, just sort of a little bit of pressure, just showing it, but haven't really jumped any, any uh, traps just yet. One of those presses where they make Wisconsin just do everything right to get it over, set their offense up. You're right, just kind of bothering them a little bit, not letting them get right into their offensive flow. That'll bother you too. And a foul on Wisconsin is Owens. Trying to grab that loose ball, commits the foul. Rutgers now in a 7-0 run will have the basketball. And then that's been sparked by Herve Lamazano with the last four points. He's got to be that guy, and he's got to do that for the Rutgers team if they want to be competitive, especially in a tough environment like Wisconsin on the road. They're going with a set play here, trying to get a good shot. Let's see what they do. Doobie for three. It's the front of the iron. Gary Interesting Waters. shot selection yeah. there. Gary Waters with a look of disgust. I don't think that's exactly the way that play is designed. Wisconsin, the ball and a four-point lead. This zone has confused Wisconsin a little bit. They still have not found their rhythm for three-point range. Harris tries it again. Owens, long rebound to keep it alive. Clayton loads it up and hits. Well, you see the uh, chess match that's played between coaches as Gary Waters goes to the zone and Bo Ryan puts in Clayton Hansen, their three-point threat, and it works as he hits the three-point shot. One at 12 outside the arc for Wisconsin, but that one counts. Amazana heating up, misses the shot. He's where he needs to be right now, I think, and it's around the rim. And another three for Wisconsin, Ray Nixon, 38-28. That's Ray Nixon's second three-point field goal attempt today. He's one for two. As Wisconsin starts to get hot, you see the numbers there, but if Ray Nixon outside, or an inside score can score from the outside, he's going to be a very difficult matchup, a lot like Herve Lamazana is for Rutgers. And a timeout call by Gary Waters. Here's a look at the first three now hit by Wisconsin. That's Clayton Hansen. Yeah, you saw Rutgers go to the zone trying to force Wisconsin's hand because they've been cold, and Clayton Hansen steps up, and then after that, it's Ray Nixon out of Whitefish Bay High School in Milwaukee. He comes out as a big man, hits a three-point shot from the top of the key. Not exactly who Rutgers was probably fearing, but it worked for Wisconsin, and now they're starting to catch a rhythm, and it may force Rutgers out of that zone defense. Well, they're not uh, looking at those two. Ray Nixon came into this game 0 for 3, not a prolific score by any stretch of the imagination, a role player for Wisconsin. And Clayton Hansen, we talked about him in the first half, the walk-on, walk-ons don't take a lot of shots, even though he is an offensive threat. Well, you're right. No, he's, he's out there to try and fill in his role, and his role right now is to play good defense and hit the three-point shot. When a team goes to a zone, that's his spot to come in and be a zone buster. Shot won't go. Wisconsin the rebound. Here comes Harris. Took a look inside, but forced back out. Owens. Little runner won't go. 
Wilkinson, look at him fight on the offensive glass. It's so different, the activity on one side of the basket and on the other side of the court, as Wisconsin swarms the offensive boards and Rutgers really getting one shot and done. And it's probably part of the difference in this game right now, the fact that Wisconsin gets on the offensive glass. Came into the game, nearly half his rebounds were on the offensive end. And how about this? Count this shot plus a foul for Doobie. That's a killer. That's just a killer for Wisconsin. You can't afford to give a three-point shot like that when you've got a team down and out. And you definitely can't afford to foul them. Doobie, a great three-point shooter. He gets the ball on top of the key, and Devin Harris tries to put a hand up. Maybe it's a little acting, but a good job by Doobie of getting to the line after making the three. Rutgers having a hard time at the free throw line. Missing some opportunities to tack on points after made baskets and fouls. They're still in the zone, and, and to me, Wisconsin looks comfortable. I don't. I, I, I think Wisconsin would, uh, would like to stay in this. They'd like to see Rutgers stay in the zone because they're getting good shots. Hanson, this one partially blocked. Lamazana, let's see if he can finish on the other end. He does with the slam. <laughs> I think a 6'10 versatile player knows how to finish, don't, don't you? Boy, he looked comfortable. He caught the ball. He went up for the dunk. That's the type of stuff you'd like to see out of him. That's a solid one-two punch. If you can block it and pick it up on the <laughs> other end that quickly on the dunk. Yeah, he sure, he sure uh, ran the distance of the court very fast, beat all the Wisconsin players down. Owens, corner, won't go. Will be the rebound. Seven-point deficit for Rutgers. Shot blocked by Harris out of bounds as Shields trying to get something going offensively for the Scarlet Knights. Herve Lamazana, the block on one end, and he finishes on the other. Aaron Madison, Wisconsin, leading Rutgers in the second half, 40 to 33. Let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. And it's Devin Harris of Wisconsin. Watch Devin Harris's eyes as he waits for the Rutgers player to guard him, but he never does because Boo Wade is in his way. And Devin Harris, I'm sure he thanked Boo Wade for staying in uh, Sean Exani's way because he got a nice highlight reel dunk for the drive of the game. 12 points now for Devin Harris and three rebounds. Rutgers down seven with the basketball. Saw both teams uh, not shooting all so well in the first half, but are shooting better in the second half of this game. Yeah, I think both teams have started to find a rhythm. Rutgers has settled down on the road, and Wisconsin is working their offense very well. They started off the half well. But right now for Rutgers, more important than offense is defense. They've got to stop Wisconsin. Well, I think well this over 50 percent. Sure, this is a spot for the, for the uh, press. I don't, yeah. Here they're going to come up and try and trap him, but if you're Rutgers, you got to make something happen. Right here, you got to get a trap, do something to try and change it up, force a couple turnovers. So Freddie Harris playing D on one end, gives Wisconsin the basketball back. Zach Morley, not the player you want to handle the ball up front, I'd imagine, for Wisconsin. And a blocking foul call. Clayton Hansen and mixing it up a little bit with Marquise West. Probably a break for Wisconsin there. His shot clock was running down and Clayton Hansen was trying to make something happen. Decent job by Marquise Webb to get in front, but, but the ref thought different, thought he was still sliding as contact was made. Shields back in for Webb. Well, watch, Han watch Hansen right here and watch Devin Harris. As they try to get open, you see Freddie Owens on the baseline. Those are the three guys that are going to have to find the open part of the zone and make a three-point shot for Wisconsin. Wisconsin being patient. Hanson three, partially blocked by Lamazana again. He's flying out, contesting those threes. Shields won't go. Morley steps on the baseline as he tries to save the basketball coming off the rebound. Yeah, that was a good job by Lamazana using his 6'10 body to put a hand up and get a piece of Clayton Hansen's shot. Wisconsin's still trying to find the rhythm for free point. Clayton 
Charlie Nixon out for Wisconsin. Wilkinson back into the lineup. Ball mishandled. Wisconsin with the basketball. Now it's loose again. Owens saves it to Morley. Everyone gets up off the floor. Nice effort by Freddie Owens. Just a very hustle play by him to get on the ground, collect the ball, and get it to his teammates so they can have a nice possession. Harris three. Off the mark. Amazon of the rebound for Rutgers. Down by seven. Scoring's kind of hit a stalemate right here. Not a whole lot going on on the board. Yeah, well, Rutgers is forcing Wisconsin to take threes, and they're not hitting them. It's a good job by Gary Waters of sticking with the zone. But right now, they've got to score some baskets. They're stopping Wisconsin, but they can't put the ball in the basket themselves. Shields off the mark. Exani the rebound, short. Tip in. And Exani is going to get it. And Rutgers now within 40-35. This is a dangerous spot for Wisconsin. You know, you've played, you've outplayed Rutgers, but you haven't pulled away because you haven't been able to hit the shots. Rutgers is going to have to take advantage of the opportunity and make something happen. There, shot block, Exani. Well, Rutgers went on a 7-0 run here in the second half. Wisconsin fouled on an 8-0 run, and now Rutgers on a 7-0 run. This is a streaky second half, to say the least. Well, let's watch Ricky Shields. He's got the ball right now. He's their score. Seven minutes left. He's going to be the guy that's going to have to make something happen for Rutgers, try to put some points on the board. 40-35 game. Shields. Offensive foul. And taking the punishment on the other end is Boo Wade. Number two, Shields. And Ricky Shields comes over to talk to Gary Waters. Can talk all they want now. There's a timeout on the floor. Student section here at the Cole Center in Madison. Number 15, Wisconsin leading Rutgers by five. 6.50 to go in the second half. Time now for the Cooper Tire defensive player of the game. It's Devin Harris, 12 points, three defensive rebounds, and three steals in this game. Yeah, no surprise, Craig. Devin Harris does that game in and game out. He gets the steals. He led the Big Ten in steals last year, averaging two a game, and he's done it tonight. And he's created those steals all on his own. It hasn't come off of a, uh, you know, a trap or anything like that. He's just stolen the ball, just taking it away from players in the open court. Five-point Wisconsin lead. Low scoring affair between these clubs. Mentioned earlier, they both averaged nearly 74 points a game. Well, that was in their first two. It's the free conference season. Anything can happen. Beautiful pass, Harris. Down low to Wade, and he's fouled on the way up by Adrian Hill. Hey, good job by Devin Harris of getting in the lane and creating something for the Wisconsin offense. As Rutgers still in that zone. We'll see when they decide to pull out of it, but Devin Harris, you see him there smiling because he, he was able to get in the middle of the zone, draw some defenders, and then dish off to Boo Wade. Wade hits the first five of six from the free throw line. Coming into tonight's contest, Boo Wade, the sophomore out of Milwaukee Vincent High School. He has started all three games this early season, his first three career starts as a Wisconsin Badger. Oh, boy. All those unforced errors. Yeah, that's a... That unforced turnovers. Unforced error. The tennis reference. It, it's just been one of those days for Rutgers. They've been throwing the ball away, shooting themselves in the foot all night long. It's continued. And, you know, they should be thankful. They're only down seven points to a 15-ranked team. Only in and out. Amazana rebound. Here comes Rutgers now. Trying to make something happen. Good seat for Doobie. Brings it out to reset the offense. Doobie can shoot it from three point land. He's a three point shooter. Stripped away by Owens. Nice Harris, pass. skip ahead. Exani fouls him on the way up. 
So Freddie Owens will go to the free throw line to shoot two. It's a nice passing. Oh, the defensive play was made by Freddie Owens, and Devin Harris gives it right up to him. Watches Freddie Owens, probably not textbook as he comes down with his hand. Usually you get a foul call, but it was successful there, and it was Devin Harris gets it. He rewards Freddie Owens with the nice bounce pass. Almost Magic Johnson like, wouldn't you say? Well, that was about as sweet as it gets right there on the pass. Owens hits the first free throw. Who would have guessed 17 and a half thousand people could get that quiet? Replacing Doobie in one place. If Zanny out with his fourth personal foul. It has been a relatively quiet night here, though, at the Cole Center. Just the tempo of the game has not been fast paced or fast break by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they've had a few highlights from Devin Harris specifically, but other than that, they've been on their uh, they've been on their butts all night. The lead now nine for Wisconsin. Rutgers just can't get the offensive flow going against this Wisconsin defense. Orly had his hand on it. Shot clock under ten. Mazana makes the move. Wrap around, count it, and the foul. Well, I think that's where they've been most effective is when he attacks the basket. You're right. I mean, I don't know how many times we have to talk about it, but he's 6'10", he's versatile, and look what he can do. I mean, that is an athletic NBA type of move that he puts on, but we've only seen a handful of them, if that. I think we may have seen three or four of those types of plays out of him, but for Rutgers to be successful, they're going to need that to happen time in and time out as they come up the court. He really hasn't asserted himself as he should because he could be a dominating player. Well, this is uh, a flaw in his game, his free throw shooting right now. And you do have to give credit to Wisconsin's defense. I don't think it's all Lamazano right now. Wisconsin has really put him out of his rhythm, and you have to give credit to, to Wisconsin for doing that. They forced Ricky Shields' leading score for Rutgers into some off balance shooting. Wilkinson shoots, hits the deck, ball loose. Lamazano the rebound for Rutgers. A 44-37 game. Now they're going to look to Lamazana now. This is his time to make something happen. Against Ray Nixon, and Nixon fouls him. They've got the worst case scenario. Lamazana struggles for the free throw line. He's got the ability to take advantage down low, but at the line, when no one's on him, he's really struggling. See, Rutgers only two of six on the line tonight. Mamazana 0 for 2, now 0 for 3 at the free throw line. You can tell there is no confidence right there. He just shakes his head and starts walking away from the free throw line. Yeah, and, and that's too bad because when you're a dominating player like Lamazana is and can be, you need to be able to make the free throws. You're going to get to the free throw line. People are going to be forced to foul you because it'll be a mismatch, and you need to take advantage. One out of two on this trip, so it does come up with at least a point. Here's the press. Now attack. Randy Owens, I'm sure, thought about a little lob to Blue Way. Pull back to reset that offense. Well, that's what I was talking about, Craig. You need to attack a, zone, a press and really penalize them. I think part of the reason Freddie Owens backed up was because of the part of the game that we're at. He's trying to get a good shot at the time. Owens can't connect from the corner. He's tried several times down in front of his Wisconsin bench, but it won't go. Bead remains six. In the corner, Shields. His game cannot get on track either here in Madison. Well, Rutgers has had several opportunities to really pull this close, and they haven't been able to. Mamazana called for the foul away from the ball. Three point shooting in this game. Each team with three apiece, but the percentages for Wisconsin. Almost hard to believe they've put it up 19 times. Yeah, you think it's cold outside. It's really cold inside the Kohl Center right now. There's nobody. be a wind chill in here, too. <laughs> you can see my breath right now. So Harris back to the free throw line for Wisconsin. 
18 of his 31 points coming into tonight's game from the free throw line. And a career high 11 free throws made against Eastern Illinois. 11 of his 15 points from the charity strike. But you know what? If that's where you get to go off, and you might as well make the best of it. Cash in. And Devin Harrison, the Batchers have 46 38. They've got something to cheer about here at the Kohl Center, Wisconsin, holding on to a 46-38 lead over Rutgers with 3.34 to go in the game. Next televised game for Wisconsin on ESPN Plus comes up on Wednesday, December 10th, when they take on the University of Wisconsin Green Bay from the Kohl Center here in Madison. Wisconsin playing UW Green Bay, UW Milwaukee, and Marquette all on its home floor this season. Yeah, the old Wisconsin Cup hosted by Wisconsin this year. so. They get to be a uh, home, home field advantage in all four of those games. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Amazana in the lane, loses the ball on the way up, and he'll draw the foul on Ray Nixon. That's what you want to do when you're behind. Stop that clock and get to the free throw. Well, you're right. You want to get to the line. Now, lamazana has got to make these free throws. We've harped on it enough, but he's got to start to hit them. Hopefully, he will down the stretch here for Rutgers. But after that, watch Rutgers. Let's see what they do. I'm thinking if he makes a second free throw, they're going to go into this press, and they're going to be a little more aggressive than they have. We've seen that soft press out of them, just a little bit of, of show, but no real traps. Now, I think we're going to get to see some real hard traps because they need to make something happen down eight points. 0 for 2 at the line on this trip. Rutgers 3 of 10 tonight. 3 of 10. Down by 8. Good job by Devin Harris handling the pressure. Ball on Shields of Rutgers. The story last year for Wisconsin was Devin Harris adjusting to the point guard role. Well, he adjusted so well, now he's the preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. Obviously, he adjusted to that role well. And you see at the end of the game, you want the ball in someone like his hands because he can break the press, and if he does get fouled, he generally makes the free throws when he goes to the line. Nine team fouls on Rutgers. It's the first, he'll get another chance. Harris leads the way in scoring with 15 points. The only batcher in double figure scoring is Shields, who's on the bench with his fourth foul. He lost his band aid. He had the band aid on earlier. Quick healer, huh? Could be. Harris hits a pair. back to Lamazano. Let's see what he can do now. Down 10. It's coming to crunch time. Off the window and in. And now you got to get into the press if you're Rutgers. It's a little bit more serious now. Yeah, you bet. Devin Harris right here. He's got to have the ball. He's the one for Wisconsin. You see he gets the ball. It takes him about three seconds to look around. He finds the open man and he breaks the pressure. For a second there, Ray Nixon had the ball. Not the guy you want to have the ball for Wisconsin. Work the shot clock and the game clock down. Wade drives off the window, count it and a foul. That's the answer Wisconsin wanted, drawing that shot clock down and then the hoop and hum. Let's take a look at Blue Wade and what he did on this play as he goes to the basket and a nice shot in the kiss off the glass. Very nice. Now, Blue Wade is stepping into the role that was left by Kirk Penny. An all Big Ten, all American for Wisconsin. Now left, he's playing overseas. Had a, had a couple tryouts with Minnesota, Timberwolves, and with the Miami Heat. Now he's overseas. But those are the shoes that Boo Wade's trying to fill. And that's a big time play for him as he tries to adjust to that position. And it's a uh, developing role in which he's trying to uh, fill those shoes. Only a sophomore. Big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah, that's not easy. Kirk Penny played a Final Four. He had won two Big Ten championships. He had played in the Olympics. He was a veteran player, and now you're asking a sophomore like Boo Wade to come in and really fill his shoes. He's done a good job so far this season, and you look to see him really develop over this year and have a strong year and then continue that his junior and senior season. Wilkins.
Dickinson just strips the ball away from Wamazana, took it away, Harris to the hoop, and it's good. Well, there was the connection. Once again, we talked about it. Mike Wilkinson and Devin Harris doing it on both ends of the court for Wisconsin. With 1.54 to go, a standing ovation from the Cole Center for the Badgers. Gary Waters calls timeout in fear of this game slipping away now down by 12 points. Matching Wisconsin's biggest lead of the game. The old pickpocket right there from Mike Wilkinson. Watch as he just rips the ball away. Well, you don't get to see it there. And Devin Harris knows what to do with it. He plays with the defense a little bit, then uses his speed to go right beyond it. And those are the two guys we talked about in the open. It was Mike Wilkinson and Devin Harris, two guys, two juniors who have played together in every game so far of their career, and they're really the leaders of this team. Doing it on both ends of the court, Mike Wilkinson with the steal, getting it to Devin Harris. Harris with 18 points to lead all scores in this game. You check Mike Wilkinson, but at half, he had four steals. That's at least his fifth if he hasn't added any others in the, in the previous 18 minutes of the second half. But a strong defensive effort from the big man. Very balanced attack for Wisconsin. Eight players have helped produce these 52 points and 18 coming from one in Devin Harris. Exactly. We talked about the depth of Wisconsin, and that's why that's where you see it right there is Wisconsin can lean on several guys to get their points. Now Mo Xani. Off the window won't go. Ball loose. Wilkinson fights for it. He's got it for Wisconsin. Needs some help. And he gets fouled by Xani. Wisconsin finishing strong here at the end on an 8-2 run. And that is five fouls now for the captain of this Rutgers squad, Sean Exaney, one of only two seniors on the roster. Well, he did a good job. He got a couple fouls early, but made his way back into the game. He was a hustler. He gave good effort. That's what you expect out of a captain on the road. He's fouled out now, but he did everything he could to help his team. Seven points for Sean Exaney, a career night against Buffalo earlier this week. Ten points, 12 rebounds, six assists, five blocks, five steals. I mean, keep going, keep yeah. going. <laughs> Load them up. But we had talked about this earlier too, Mike. You, you know, you just never know what you're going to get game for game, no matter how experienced you are in college basketball, night in and night out. Yeah, exactly, and that's why you have such an appreciation for those guys that give you the consistency. When you get the seniors or the juniors, that can give you consistency. A lot like we've seen out of Devin Harris tonight, Mike Wilkinson. You're going to have a successful team because you can count on those guys night in and night out to be there. Wilkinson with the pair to make it a 14-point lead. And a blocking foul called down low on Wisconsin. And it's going to go on to Harris. I'm surprised Lamazana didn't shoot that ball there, but he did take it in. And for better or for worse, he got the foul. Let's see if he can make anything of it at the free throw line. So Lamazana back to the free throw line, and probably not the place he would choose to be at this point. Only one for six yeah. in tonight's game. Not exactly comfortable there. Now he makes his second. Look at Xavier not sitting down. The student section he waits for a player to sit down before they berate them, but uh, the Grateful Red, I'm sure still paying attention to Xavier. Well, he's a senior, he has seen this before, <laughs> yeah, I'm he, sure. He, he's seen that whole <laughs> <on> routine. <laughs> you gotta win your battles that you can, I guess. The Grateful Red parked behind the uh, basket and next to the Rutgers bench, and you can see Xavier like still standing there. Well, he's gonna have a, uh, a partner to stand with now. As Ricky Shields is going to go out. Let's see what he does. Real game within the game. Wilkinson back to the free throw line. They got the best of them right there. <laughs> now who wins between Xaney and the student section? Now he's got to stand up the whole time. He's probably tired. Is that a victory for him? Or did, did the student section win if he doesn't sit down? I think I think the rules are if you are the students, you only win if the player sits down. Is that right? That, that's plain by the rules. Okay, so so he, so Xaney's winning right now. He's winning. Okay, he knows it. <laughs> it's a little head game going on. He's got a minute twenty-eight. A battle of wills. <laughs> <laughs> Another free.
free throw for Wilkinson, 54-41. Under 90 seconds to go. Rutgers will fall for the first time this season, and Wisconsin will improve to 3-0 and, and get ready for a big test at Maryland next uh, Tuesday in that ACC Big Ten Challenge coming up. Yeah, what a fun event for the Big Ten, the ACC, to go head-to-head. -head. Two power conferences, and they try and match up equal talent on both sides. They play a home and away, a neutral home and neutral away. Just a, a good format to expose those two conferences and really feel each other out early in the season. Now the students really giving it to them. Xaney still standing up. He knows what's going on. Shale Keating into the game now for Rutgers. Under a minute to go. And the shot clock expires for Rutgers. Not sure if they knew that uh, shot clock was running down. No, a couple, so. couple of wrinkles need to be ironed out for Gary Waters Club yet here, but this is the test you get on the road in this type of environment, Big Ten. Top 25 school in Wisconsin, ranked 15. Well, you know, Craig, I think that was indicative of the night it's been for Rutgers. They just haven't been into the game at all. You know, they've stayed close, but mostly because Wisconsin was cold on offense, not really because of anything they did to really pressure Wisconsin. And right there, well, the shot clock just runs out. Almost embarrassing for Rutgers. And this off Harris's foot as Webb plays defense and gets the ball back. stats here. Inside shot missed. Finally put back by Joints. Under 10 seconds to go. And Wisconsin will be victorious over Rutgers here at home. Oh no, good game for Wisconsin. They came out, they didn't really have the rhythm offensively. But they stuck with the game plan, and they were able to wear out this very athletic and aggressive Rutgers team. So 55-43 is our final score here at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin looking after a very slugger start in the first half. It was a very tight, it was 21-19 at halftime, Wisconsin leading Rutgers, but right out of the gates in the second half, Wisconsin opened up with a 9-0 run to make the state. Well, you're right, Craig. I think that first three minutes of the second half really were the difference for Wisconsin as Rutgers picked up a couple quick fouls, something they couldn't afford to do with a thin bench, and then they and then they were able to hit some big shots with Wisconsin. So Rutgers, you know, they, they never really got into the flow of the game. Give credit to Wisconsin's defense for keeping them out of it. And Rutgers can take on this game that they went back, they battled the Big Ten foe, and now they've got to look forward and try to build on everything that they learned today. Another deciding factor, Wisconsin 18 of 22 from the free throw line. Only four made free throws for Rutgers. Next TV here on ESPN Plus for Wisconsin, UW-Green Bay, and the Badgers on December 10th. For Mike Kelly, I'm Craig Kishan saying so long from the Kohl Center. 55-43 Wisconsin. Good night, everyone.